This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. So when I say ocean, I do not mean adding in a plane with an ocean modifier with extra resolution alignments and a drive to run the time parameter, which would look like this. The material set to a glass BSDF with a watery color and an IOR 1.3 along with an HDRI from HDRI Haven to get more realistic lighting, and inserting in some foam batting and a new data layer with some coverage, which we can access through an attribute node and filter to make this part of the BSDF color. <sighs> No, that's not what I mean by Blender Ocean. I want something that actually looks realistic, which means we'll need to capture some real life footage, and that means it's finally time for me to come out of hiding. <laughs> So yeah, surprise, it's a matte painting tutorial, but specifically for oceans that you can do with pretty much any body of water that's, you know, bigger than a puddle. And while you could do this in traditional compositing, I thought, eh, it's boring. So instead, I'm going to show you the wonders of viewport compositing. And then that's a uh, dramatic way of saying we're going to be projecting our layers onto some spheres in the viewport, which I know, I know is a weird way to work, but it's essentially real time and much more interactive. Unlike the compositing tab where you got to sacrifice your firstborn and like deep fry your testicles just to get this thing to be moderately responsive. But anyways, viewport compositing is actually a fun way to work where you can replicate most effects you can do a normal compositing and yeah sometimes it's a bit tricky but like with my actually no 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 you're you're right maybe this is actually too hard we better quit while we're ahead i'm calling it we're wrapping up here we'll try an easier effect next time Hey, shh, shh, stop talking. Look at how much time's left in the video. Clearly, I'm still gonna teach you how to make oceans. Just be a bit patient, okay? It's just a dumb bit. Let me have my dumb little joke. But what isn't a joke is that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And Squarespace is a platform that lets you make beautiful websites without needing to know how to code. You can just pick a template, start dragging stuff around, and you've created a website. In fact, my website, www.cgmatter.com, was in fact made with Squarespace. And Squarespace has features like analytics, which are super important because you need to know who is going to your website, how many people those are, even email campaign so you can send out your personal or brand message directed at your audience. And you can already get this super affordably with an annual subscription that is less than $10 a month, but I'm about to make that deal substantially sweeter. After you go to Squarespace to try your free trial, you can use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let me teach you how to actually make this ocean uh, without baiting you again. Yeah, so like I was talking about, go film some footage of any water you have near where you live. And I don't want to hear any excuses, okay? I was like climbing out on these rocks, almost split my face open just to get some stupid shots more up close. Just whatever means necessary. Necessary, get your footage of some water and then we can begin. And just like any other effect, it seems that tracking is always at the beginning of the story, which is a shame because I hate talking about it, but I think I can keep it simple. So this is the footage I'm deciding that we're going to use because it has a very well-defined horizon line. And yeah, there's objects like this one that should be in the foreground in our compositing workflow, which is tricky, but you know what? We'll get back to that. For our purposes, all that matters is dragging in our footage directly to import it, hitting these two oh. buttons to get oh. started, picking a feature and control clicking to add a tracker, use alt s to make sure our search window is big enough and then alt and right left arrow to track forwards and backwards respectively and then we're just going to be repeating this process over and over again until we have like eight trackers throughout the shots but some tricks to speed up your workflow you can click this to automatically detect features use the annotation tool to constrain where we want these trackers because of course you wouldn't want to track something like the water that's moving all the time it doesn't make sense so let's keep that out of our selection repeatedly using this process as a sort of manual auto hybrid tracking and when you're done you can have blender calculate an initial camera solve and don't worry you will get a super high tracking error for this. Like really anything above one pixel error is like pretty much unusable. Again, don't worry about this. This is normal. We fix it by enabling tripod because I filmed this using a tripod overlooking the harbor. Uh, but even if you did technically move while filming, as long as you're only tracking super distant points like those buildings over there, there's effectively no parallax making it very, very, very close to a tripod shot. But anyways, also enable some of these other settings resolve for the camera. And wow, that's a much lower pixel error. That's actually going to be usable for what we're trying to do. Okay, finally, we're done with tracking. I swear every time I talk about it, I enter some kind of fever dream where I really don't want to be there, but also I don't have a face. But projection is the next step in this process, and you can see it's kind of weird that the moving camera stabilizes the footage on the geometry, but that's actually going to be super useful in a bit. Hint, hint, and the knife tool, that's what it's going to be good for. But also the distance of our sphere from the camera doesn't seem to matter, which is great if we want to start stacking layers for compositing, not have them overlap on top. But you know what? I think I'm getting a bit sidetracked here. The process I found the easiest was just adding in a sphere centered at the camera. This is going to be tracked to the motion, and we can use 
these view coordinates to reorient it so the horizon has an edge loop, then creating a material like this that will play the footage in real time, which might not look the best, but if you either set the coordinates to windowed, making sure to only keep the faces that actually show up in the shot that will work, but only from the camera view, or if we add in a UV project modifier from the camera's point of view with a bit of extra geometry, then we've isolated our footage correctly, which again looks perfect from the camera view. Next, added in another sphere further in the background and loaded in an HDRI texture from HDRI Haven just so we can get a matching sky meeting at the horizon line, which of course brings back the issue of the foreground geometry that gets cut off by the horizon, but again, don't worry, we already know how to take care of this, it's just going to be another sphere in the foreground with the projected video, and bust out that knife tool, because we're isolating the entire thing, keeping only those faces, and would you look at that, it's tracked on perfectly. Final thing is that that would be cool to add in some haze to really blend these elements together in a procedural way, and of course the sphere has to be behind our foreground section, and here's the node network I decided on, which basically just controls the haze distribution using a color ramp, and we can also choose the haze color. By the way, if any of these steps aren't working for you and you're getting these solid black sections of the sphere without transparency, it's because you have to set the material blend mode to alpha blend for Eevee or just switch over to cycles instead. Probably should have mentioned that a bit earlier, but oh well. At least we have our finished composite, which we can render out with some motion blur, which by the way, we get for free from this process because of the tracking. And for the actual very lame 2D compositing, I thought that oceans usually look like this very cold and uninviting places, so I just dropped the gamma a bit to wash this out and also mix this with some tone mapping to make it even more bleak, but yeah, that, that, that's the secret to Blunder Oceans. You can use this technique really on any footage that has a distant horizon line, which is pretty cool.